Hi, Jim Bowen here. It's week two in sophomore design. This week we're going to talk about giving effective oral presentations. In this lecture I'm going to go over a PowerPoint presentation that talks about how to plan, prepare, and give effective oral presentations. Then in your lab you'll have a chance to look at some oral presentations, both good and not so good. So let's get started with this presentation, how to give effective oral presentations. This lecture focuses on how to give an effective oral presentation in engineering. The talk is divided into two parts. Part one is planning and giving the talk, and part two is designing effective visual. Let's first talk about the presentation assignment. There are five total presentations that you'll give. There are four topics that you'll give. Topic one is an ASCE smart it's like a news story about civil engineering. The second talk is a how-to. You teach us how to do something. Providing all the materials to the audience. Presentation three is a FE sample problem solution. Presentation four is a state of your local infrastructure. It's like an ASCE smart brief for your hometown. The fifth presentation, you get to choose to do one of those four types of oral presentations again. But don't do the same one a second time. That's happened. It's not good. Let's talk a little bit about the presentation assignment grading. Each of those five presentations is worth 5% of the final grade. There are no drops. Each presentation is five to seven minutes long. You should shoot for six minutes. Each presentation will be graded by the section TA. Each presentation will be submitted to the Canvas page before class. A little bit about the schedule. You must present the first two presentations in October. You decide which one you'll present first. You can only present once per class. My recommendation is to start with what's easiest for you. Now let's talk about planning and giving the talk. You can think of the process of creating a presentation as having four parts. Plan, prepare, practice, and present. The four P's of oral presentation. The classic structure of a presentation, and this is just a guideline. Now for a short presentation like the ones we're doing, sometimes this classic structure can be a little much. As you think of what you want to present, it's important to avoid leaving your audience at the dock. And the idea there is you 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 don't want to lose your audience at the very beginning of the presentation. Generally, there's two ways you lose an audience. First, you fail to motivate your audience to listen to what you're saying, and second, you skip some fundamental piece of background information that's needed for the audience to understand your presentation. Let's talk about motivation for listening. What we want to do is get our audience interested in what we're going to say. We want to tell them a story, tell them an interesting story. And what you're trying to do is use a narrative to tell your story. The narrative is a powerful tool for teaching and learning because it, it harnesses the strategies that the brain already uses for learning. What you're trying to do is tell a good story. A good story has three parts say three acts in a three-act play. The beginning, the middle, and the end. The first part sets up the story by telling of a problem, a conflict. The second part raises that action, raises the conflict. The last part of the story, the third act, resolves the conflict. Here are some great examples from previous presentations. This is a presentation about the Union Station Project in Raleigh. Here's another good example from the DuPont State Forest Renovations. There's a typo that something you should be careful not to have in your presentation, very clearly states the problem. So what, what you want to do to set up your presentation, start off with saying problem or the conflict. Where you'll get that information is in the ASCE Smart Brief story that you're going to use for your presentation. So you should look into your story for the problem or the conflict that you can use as part of your storytelling. Another important part of that first part of the presentation presentation is to give adequate background information. So you should think of your presentation as having three parts, three parts of a pie. You need to persuade, you need to inform, you need to entertain. So in your presentation, think of how you're going to do each of these parts. Think of the purpose of your presentation. What information do you need to give your audience so that they'll be able to follow your story? Think of who is my audience, what background information do they need for this particular story. 
story. Here's an example from a previous presentation. It gives information about the location, the size, where it's located, and what sort of development it is. Beginning part of the presentation, keep in mind too the requirements that the presentation be limited to five to seven minutes. Once you've created the presentation, it's important to practice. Budget some practice time. Don't finish your presentation right before it's time to give it. Read your presentation out loud. You might also want to rehearse with a friend or a family member or a classmate, or you may want to record yourself. But however you do it, you should rehearse your way. You may want to consider using a presentation remote as you practice and give your presentation. As you practice your presentation, make sure your animations work correctly. Keep it simple. I've seen many presentations that weren't good simply because the animations were so cheesy and complicated that it distracted from the presentation. In general, bring an extra copy of your pre presentation on a USB drive, although in this class we're going to only use presentations that have been uploaded to the Canvas site. You should also plan to bring whatever other supplies you might need. For a how-to presentation, there might be things that the audience needs. If you're teaching them how to do a knot, they'll need some string. All right, so next let's talk about presenting. Be sure you know your content. Make eye contact with the audience, multiple people. Channel that nervous energy that you're going to have into being enthusiastic when you give your presentation. Don't hide behind the podium. Move around in a natural way. You'll want to speak slower than you think you should. We tend to speed up as we get nervous. Be sure to use inflection and gestures as you speak. Here's a review of part one. Think of the four P's of presentation, planning, preparing, practicing, and presenting. Think of the story as having three parts, a beginning, a middle, and an end. Think about how not to lose your audience in the beginning by giving them background information and setting up the problem or the, the conflict. Find your ways to practice so you're ready and remember those additional tips on presenting, moving around, eye contact, etc. Next, let's talk about designing effective visual. First, let's look at the font. What you want to use is a a font without a serif. You want to use a, a sans serif typeface for display on a screen. Here's an example of a typeface with a serif and a typeface without a serif. Here are some examples of serif fonts on the left and sans serif fonts on the right. Keep your slides relatively simple by limiting the number of different fonts per slide. Also make your fonts a readable size. Here's a range of font sizes from 36 point all the way down to 18 point. What you want to do is size your font appropriately for the particular location where you're presenting. An advantage too of the larger fonts is that it limits how much information you can put on a single slide which helps the reader see what's on your slide. You'll want to limit the use of italics because text written in italics is difficult to read. Here's an example. Other ways you can make your text difficult to read is to put it in an all cap. Another tip for making text readable is to use bullets. Bullets or numbered lists break up the text, but be careful not to use too many, and you can animate them as well. This is a PDF presentation, so it's not animated, but PowerPoint presentations can be animated. You should use color to highlight aspects of your slide, but don't use too many colors. Again, you don't want it to be distracting. You want to draw the ed audience to what it is you want them to focus on and not be distracted by many different colors. In choosing colors, you'll want to be careful not to use colors that are so bright that they can make the text unreadable. Oftentimes, graphic designers like bright or dark colors for backgrounds and white text, but what you find is that it can be difficult to read. Here are two examples of that. Again, the, the bright background and the colored text is difficult to read. If you choose to have a background, make it relatively light colored and make the, make the text darker. Now let's talk about PowerPoint design templates. As is said here, one does not simply use PowerPoint design templates. It's a starting point. Here's a, a template. What you'll find is that the, none of the templates are, are great out of the box. Oftentimes you'll need to adjust the font type, the size, and the color. You'll, they'll need to be tweaked. There are some templates that are just so bad that they shouldn't be used at all. This is better, the font size is better, but remember you'll need to tweak the PowerPoint template for your use. Here's another template. This is not one I would recommend. 
None of them are great. Others are so bad that you should just avoid them in entirely. Another template here, and whatever you choose, the color scheme, the font sizes may need to be tweaked. Here's another choice, and another choice, and another choice. So I hope you've gotten the idea here that none of these design templates are great. For most, the default settings are a starting point. You'll need to tweak them. Next, let's talk a little bit about using visual aids. Visual, by visual aids, I mean charts or tables, graphs or photos. First, don't stand between the visual aid and the audience. Next, look at the audience, not the visual aid, and if appropriate, use a pointer. But be careful, watch out for the shaky laser. It's important to focus in your table chart or graphics on the information that you're presenting. Don't just use a table chart or graphics as is. If you're not going to use it, you should get rid of it. This is a, an example of a bad table just copied from Excel. There's just simply too much information on this slide. What we can do is enlarge the table, remove the info that we don't need, and highlight the important data. Here's another example of a bad diagram, lobes of the brain. There's simply too much information here, too much text. It's too small. It's difficult to read. Here's a better diagram that focuses on the information that we'll present. Here's an even better diagram where the font sizes are enlarged so to make it easier to see the information that we want to present. One of the most challenging presentations to give is the sample FE problem. I'm going to give you a few tips on it. You should retype the problem statement onto a PowerPoint slide. You should also include the choices for the answer on that slide. You should also use the PowerPoint slides to give a little bit of background information and then work out the problem on the chalkboard. Make sure you use a screenshot and enlarge the diagram so people can see the problem. This is a figure from a sample FE problem presentation where the figure has been enlarged so it can be easily seen by the audience. You can also download the FE handbook as a PDF, you can use the PDF to capture relevant formulas, conversion factors, and constants. Here's a review of part two. You should select font styles, sizes, and colors to make your presentation as readable as possible. We discussed some of the pitfalls of the de default design templates. We talked about selecting, editing, and enlarging visual aids, and then spent some time talking about the FE sample problem and giving you presentation tips. That's it for this lecture.